But let's talk about some traits of successful entrepreneurs. So I think you recognize this chart from a little while ago. Um, let's talk about these sort of intelligences in the context of the kinds of skills or experiences that one wants to make sure you bring onto your team as you're developing an entrepreneurial uh, mindset or an entrepreneurial team to, develop, to go after an opportunity. First of all, prior industry experience really helps. Uh, that's sort of this practical experience. You know how the industry works. You know a lot of facts about how that particular industry works. If you want to go into the, uh, the airline business, it really helps to understand how planes work and how planes are manufactured or how scheduling works. If you want to go into a software development or to like a website development, you want to make sure you know some design skills. You want to make sure you understand how, how the, the internet works and how websites function and the different tools associated with that. So prior experience really helps. That's why in many cases, uh, the um, entrepreneurs come out of an industry, particularly when they have late career starts, that they've come out and they, they, start, in, they start businesses in the industry, industry they came from, or they came out of. And that, the next one to think about is developing analytical skills, cognitive skills, that is things like being able to use spreadsheets and financial models and statistical analysis and those kinds of skills that help one figure out how, the, how one can quantify the business opportunity and the like. So individuals that have a propensity for being able to kind of parse a problem and solve that, that sort of an issue. Uh, combine that with industry experience. Sometimes it might be the same person, but other times it might be different people. Creativity, you need someone, particularly in the marketing side, but also in the product design or any other design sort of context, or just in the brainstorming sessions, creativity that allows one to frame or identify connections among projects and create some sort of a overarching vision about how that art organization or how that product or service might become a, uh, a new industry over time. The sorts of vision that, uh, we were, that Steve Jobs would have about iPhones and the like. And then lastly, having a social network, people that you know be able to build contacts and bring the resources that are necessary into a different kind of project. These are the kind of skills that people need to be focused on as you're building not only your own skills to become part of a team, but also bringing other people into the organization that have these kinds of skills. So let's talk about them. Prior industry experience, many, many uh, studies have shown that working in particular industries is greatly enhances the probability of opening or starting a new company, much more likely to spot a, mar spot a market niche or some area that isn't working, a problem that needs to be solved. You also have contacts ready-made in that industry so that you could bring those to bear. At the same time, sometimes outsiders, by, by virtue of analogy from other industries, can bring new ideas into an old industry and innovate in that context. Elon Musk, Musk is an example of that, founding text, uh, Tesla and SpaceX. Uh, and Debbie Fields with Fields Cookies didn't really have experience in, in selling uh, those kinds of products either. So it is there is an anecdotal argument that says new ideas by analogy could change an industry, but by and large, industries that are cranking along, you could find new opportunities in them as well. Cognitive factors, studies have shown that opportunities are recognized, can be recognized by people as a sort of an innate skill level to connect the dots, as we were saying, and be able to do the analysis that helps you understand whether there's really an opportunity out there, whether there really is a, a hit, that is, there's potential there and it's not a false alarm. Um, some people think that there's like a sixth sense that people have um, to, to identify them. It's called uh, entrepreneurial alertness. Uh, kind of notice things that other people don't. Uh, that's pretty, sometimes after the fact, it's pretty easy to say that person has that skill because they found, you know, like uh, Jeff Bezos had the skill of identifying things. He found Amazon, right? It's sort of after the fact. Don't necessarily rely on this. They don't believe somebody just because they have this sort of sense of charisma about it. You still want to do your analysis 
Um, and oftentimes people will get really focused on their ideas and it gives you this anecdotal sense that there is, there are people that identify them, but there's not real evidence that you could do that you could predict that ahead of time. Usually after the fact, you say Steve Jobs had that sense or Bill Gates had that sense or whatever. But um, would you know that ahead of time? Not so not so easy. Creativity is another, another uh, necessary uh, aspect of bringing ideas to the table. This is uh, Barron in Ireland from the textbook talks about five different ste steps uh, that creative ideas process. You prepare by thinking about or bringing in lots of information. You incubate the ideas, sort of let them settle. And ultimately, sometimes there's a eureka moment where the ideas are combined into a solution. Uh, you never believe that. You don't believe the eureka until you evaluate it, test it, elaborate on it, and then uh, once again, figure out whether it um, it is ready or is it still in the incubation stage. Do you know when it's out of the incubation stage when it evaluates and becomes a real uh, opportunity? So creativity um, is something that takes time. There's this incubation process. So you also want to recognize that there's a certain slowness to the process. It doesn't happen immediately. That's why the availability heuristic can be problematic because it's not coming together. Somebody comes up with a solution. You jump on it because people are uncomfortable oftentimes with the uncertainty of bringing these new ideas into a real into reality. And the last one of these was the social network, knowing people, having contacts with people that are not necessarily social contacts, but sort of transactional and they are in a certain industry. You know, people that know how to build websites, you know, people that know how to get intellectual property done, you know, people that know how to build a certain kind of product, you know, people that do marketing product design, you know, people that do focus groups, you have all these connections. Um, 40 to 50% of people who start a business generally get their idea from some kind of a social interaction or social context. It's in the, in the context of some kind of an interaction that you go, ah, you know, there's a business there. So let's look at the social network. There's a, lots of research about strong versus weak ties. Strong ties are the people you hang with all the time, family and friends. Uh, weak ties are people you meet through others. So they're the ones that you somebody introduces you to at an event or a party or something like that or a networking event. And you're, you have some shared interests, but you also have m many different experiences because you're weakly connected with someone else. So the likelihood of bringing ideas together that wouldn't otherwise come together or haven't otherwise come together in the more familiar strong tie setting um, creates more opportunities for for real for new ideas to develop and be captured in that context of interaction and then could be incubated and move forward it's much more likely or more likely that you get uh, an idea from some kind of an interaction that is um, not a day to, everyday kind of thing but a once in a while event where you run into somebody that you have a really interesting conversation with